Our our migratory birds have two legs, not four. Uh, but most birds do. They're Wait, not like what that. birds have four <laughs> See, legs? I'm telling you, Eric, I'm tired. Welcome to Real Siblings. It ain't easy. A real estate podcast with the goal to educate, inform, and save their listeners time as they navigate the market and properties in their neighborhoods. Get ready to join real-life siblings and professional real estate advisors, Donna Reed and Eric Seaman, as they discuss how it may be simple, but it ain't always easy. Every time I think about the places I have known, I realize that times have changed So I'll do what I can To make this house Into a home Yeah, yeah oh. Hi everyone and welcome to Real Siblings It Ain't Easy A real estate podcast that just ain't typical I'm Eric, she's Donna, and we are the Real Siblings. She's older, I'm balder, and we are both professional realtors with Keller Williams. This podcast blends lifestyle together with real estate as we work to communicate, educate, connect, and entertain our listeners. We hope that while we share some memories, history, and statistics, and information about the real estate industry, that we will illuminate our listeners on today's topic. As we are winding down this spring thing, would that be a right way to say it? Donna, what's going on in Arizona? I love that you said we were going to illuminate that. Uh, right? I, that was just a recent look up on Thesaurus to look for synonyms <laughs> for enlightening. I was like, okay, we're going to illuminate. So spring in Arizona, you know what? This has been such a weird year, Eric, because we got so much rain and honestly, I was still sitting outside in the sun last week in Scottsdale at three in the afternoon. Some years that would be 110 degrees and there'd be no way, but it was 80. It was super nice out and it's beautiful. You know, we had a lot of rain this year, which also meant snow on Mount Lemon. She does in air quotes because we never know really how much that was, but it was. How tall is Mount Lemon? Do you know? About right there. Uh, About right there. taller than me i should learn that we're sleep deprived right now let's just say it exactly i'll look that up tall enough to get snow how's that (laughs) which mountain range is it part of mount lemon is part of part of the catalina mountains the catalina so they're what eight to ten thousand right yeah it's somewhere up in there and it's interesting because yesterday at an open house there was a guy coming and he was from colorado and he was talking about being a danger junkie and skiing and i'm like we have a ski resort for about 10 days a year. I'm not sure resort, a ski slope. <laughs> so this would be like the slopes that we had in Ohio and Michigan when we went daredevil skiing. Yes, yes, yeah, anyway, sort of funny. In so, the flatlands of the Midwest. Right, right, you can find that hill to go down. Spring here is kind of winding down. It always is a little scary as we get into June because that's our hottest month of the year. So I'm loving this. June nice. is. Yeah, before monsoons hit. It's hot, 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 hot. And then once monsoons hit, it will cool down after the rain and things is, like that. Is that true for the whole state? Yeah, pretty or, much. Or is it more Tucson because you guys are a little bit different? Tucson, Phoenix, both. Yeah, super hot, okay. super, super hot. And again, the cactus are beautiful this year. I wish I had a really great cactus photo to show you, but I don't. And then, you know, it's all the birds that are moving. No. Yeah, about- you guys get a lot of migratory birds. <laughs> One of the things that it, that is a migratory bird for us, and it didn't happen much this year, was the northern robin that we grew up with in Ohio. Wow. It, it is very distinctive. It lasts for about 10 days. And I can remember walking out the door and you hear the distinctive sound of a robin while I'm taking the dogs out for their morning constitutional. <laughs> and sure enough, they're over on the ground in our flow field. Pulling worms out robins because the whole time it's their ground feeding. ground feeders. We don't have a lot of naturally ground feeding birds in San Antonio. Grackles right. don't count because they're just scavengers picking up whatever. Right. But true ground feeders like a robin is. I see grackles in the parking lot at your stores under the cars. Yeah, they're everywhere. And on yep. the st- and on the trees, making a mess of cars and everything else. But your mm-hmm. migratory birds are what? Our our migratory birds have two legs, not four. Uh, but most birds do. They're Wait, not like what that. birds. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, Eric, I'm tired. Most birds have, okay, let's let's rewind and forget I just said that. Can you take that out? Maybe they have four legs. Oh, heck no. With all my laughing, it's in. Yeah. 
Oh my lord. Okay, so our birds are snowbirds. They're not bird birds. And if I was a member of the Audubon Society, like my girlfriend Beth, I would be able to tell you what <laughs> real birds come and go for a week or two passing through, but I'm not, and I don't know. So what I do know is that this is wrapping up our winter visitor season. I noticed that a member of my church posted the other day that she's home at her home in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So they are people that come here. They're here for the winter months. And once we get past Easter, depending on where Easter falls, people start start going back to Chicago, Minneapolis, Wisconsin, Seattle, you know. And and you introduced a term in a previous podcast uh, that I was not familiar with. They're feeder cities or states, right? Is what y'all yeah. referred to? Yeah, Chicago is our number one feeder city. And if I was to go look at stats again, I could probably still prove that. But it was the for a while as a member of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, I knew that that was the only city where we in Tucson advertised on the city buses for the city of Tucson. You'd see a bus and it would have a great big picture of, you know, the Catalina Mountains with the saguaro cactus blooming and things like that. And honestly, I met a woman in Scottsdale this weekend who was wearing a Chicago shirt. And I'm like, is that where you're from? She goes, yeah, where'd you grow up? Hinsdale. Oh, I have cousins in Hinsdale. You know what I mean? So absolutely. And our Ohio group at church, we have an Ohio group, you know. An there. Ohio group at church. How big is your Ohio group? I didn't ever know you had an Ohio group. I don't, Actually, I don't think the number of times I visited you ever introduced. No, this is the Ohio group. So this is like a post-COVID getting the church back together in small groups to get to know people. who. Uh, okay. So it's it's relatively new. And there are anywhere from 10 to 25 of us who might go to any specific meeting. Some of them will go home to Ohio now. So some I was going to say, so some of them are, are part of your migratory birds. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly right. I also, can I bring up the referral that I'm getting from Ohio? Is it a good bring, time? Bring up the referral. That's, so, that's the way we'd like to do business, right? Referrals. Yes, yes. For those of you that have listened regularly and those who haven't, the last year, was it last year already? It, it was the December uh, 16th episode. We did it before okay. Christmas. All right. So uh, our first guest that we had was Rachel Zimmerman Williams, who is from our little hometown of Lindsay. And she is a realtor with the Danbury Company up in Northwest Ohio. And she sells kind of in the Toledo and then in our little town and out the country. And they drive all over. And today I got a phone call from someone in her office who is going to refer somebody to me who works at Bowling Green State University and is taking a job at the University of Arizona. So super excited about that. Rachel doesn't even know. All right. and, and you've got an affiliation kind of with Bowling Green because the boys skated up there regularly, right? Oh, yeah. They Your would, boys well, were... Okay. We would help with the hockey tournaments and stuff like that, you know, up there too with, with Lyerleys and things like that. And you know, half of our high school went to Bowling Green between Ohio State and BG. So, that was a lot of yeah, individuals. Yeah. Yes, it was. So, so I just saw that somebody from home is going to be a third generation Falcon. Who was that? I'll have to think about that. And I still say home. Isn't that funny that I've been here 23 right. years and they still say. And that, and that would be a Bowling Green Falcon because yes. there are no native Falcons, Falcons to Ohio that I'm aware of. We have Falcons here in Tucson, but mostly they're out at the Desert Museum landing on people's arms. What was intriguing to me was the first time we were out there in the evening and out a little bit further, because you don't get them where you're at, but the Nighthawks. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that they're ground dwellers. Yeah. And they kind of fly up from the ground, and then all of a sudden they're circling all over the place. It's almost yeah. as cool as a big swarm of bats watching the Nighthawks to come yeah. out. So excited about those. This is Eric, the zoologist. I know. I know the brother that should have been a veterinarian. Anyway, super excited about the fact that someone from back at home has a referral for somebody coming to Tucson. And I told this young lady on the phone, her name is Stephanie, that we have a U of A football coach who just took a job at Boeing Green. So how funny is that? That And he happens to be an Up With People alumni. So all these connections, and we are a world of connections. That's how we do business. So it's fun to show yeah. that. Well, and because of your relationship, who got you into real estate? Well, Casey? Casey's who I worked with. Uh, that's not who first got me in, but that's who I start. I spent the most time with learning. Yeah. And okay. she sings with me. Well, and, and, and one of my first referrals from Tucson to San Antonio was from Casey. Yeah. And then from her office, a subsequent referral from Stevie. 
Yeah, from somebody else at tier, a tier into yeah. it. The way the world goes round. Yay. In real estate anyway. That's what we Yes, do. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. You also said that because of the snow, you started and then we really drifted off because that's the way we do things. Snow yeah. and flowers yeah. and that the cactus is. Yeah, yep. So right now, our prickly pear are beautiful. So there's a lot of variety of prickly pear. They not only bear the fruit that makes that purple juice or whatever, they also get beautiful yellow and orange blooms, especially the purple leaved prickly pears with the yellow blooms are gorgeous right now. And the saguaros are starting to bloom. So at the tops of the cactus, I actually took a picture when I was up in Scottsdale at Dan and Lisa's. And right. all the blooms are coming out on the top of the saguaro right now. So. And choyos? I thought I saw some pictures of the choyos are getting Choya. some blooms yeah. too. Yeah. And so that's kind of an interesting plant because they're they're wonky and spindly and they're just weird. But they get orange and burgundy and bright pink and all together. So all of our areas that aren't already torn up with new homes being built <laughs> are are beautiful right now and yeah and and i had someone who was helping take care of our house during one of our many trips in the past who actually gave me a choyo cactus and when jameson and brentley were with us we planted the choyo cactus really? and while it is an invasive species to the hill country we have one growing outside now and it's doing quite well. It doesn't have any blooms this year, but I think it's gotten to the point where four years in next year, I expect to have a couple that have some blooms on it. Oh, wow. Is it Our green? Our prickly pears have done pretty well this year too. That is one of the things uh, what, we have in common. Yeah. We have one though that's actually Jameson found it with all the walks we used to take with my dogs. I walk my dogs twice a day. Yeah. And around the corner from ours, he found this area. We we just started calling it the cactus patch. And it actually has a variety of cactus called a foxtail. And it gets named by the bloom. The blooms are like your prickly pear. They last about 24 to 36 hours. Okay. And disappears. But the center of it is a swirl of kind of orangish red. And it's a pale yellow flower. It's They're just a cool little cactus. And they only grow in this patch. It's a, about an eight foot by eight yeah. foot area. Yeah, yeah. Eric, let's go back to, uh, we were talking about the snowbirds here. We we talked about, we touched on this a little bit before. You don't get as much of that there, do you? No, yeah. our, our population does not. We When we have snowbirds, they come to Texas in RVs. And um, I don't know if that's because Texas is so big. And they choose not to stay in one area. Oh, well, that could so be. They'll come down here. There's a, several RV parks up the road in our county seat, Bandera, mm -hmm. that will swarm and have 50, 60 RVs. But then they'll pick up and move and they'll go someplace else for a, a month. They may head yeah. down a little bit closer to the coast. So they make the rounds. They're not as, I am coming from here to here, like your feeder cities are in your snowbirds. Interesting. Ours and continue to migrate. So that makes me think of, I was telling you before we started recording about Marie-José and Francois, who I had dinner with last night, and they were the first French speakers that I sold to. This is my, what year is this? This is my like 18th year in the business. I was going to say 17, 18 years, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they bought 14 years ago. We were talking about this. They're from Quebec. When they first came here, they came here because Francois likes to ride bikes more than he likes to like do water sports because so much, so many people east of the Mississippi stay east of the Mississippi and his friends all thought he was crazy. Well, they've had all their friends from Quebec come and rent, you know, from their place, but they are now both 60 ish, 59 or 60. They are here more often. They have both retired. So when we were talking about that, I was thinking about how it's the 14th year I see them once or twice a year. Now they can come for longer periods of time because first Francois retired and now Marie Jose has friend, has retired. The relationships that have been built from that and how much of life we know of each other, seeing each other twice a year when they come come down. Now, when they leave, they own their house, right? You they have own, to buy a, their it's house. A condo. It's a condo. So yeah. when they're not here, what happens with their condo? So they will close it up for the summer. They're actually going to Italy. Marie Jose's family's from Italy. And then they'll be back home in Quebec for the summer. And then come fall, they'll come back again. 
And then they will rent it out for like December, January, February, March, and then they'll come back again in April. But their complex doesn't allow anything shorter than a month. So interestingly, the one that I bought is only about two miles south of them, but mine allows short term. There's a month is considered short term. And they predominantly in the past have rented to other people from Quebec that they know. And it's managed by the same person that manages the whole condo complex. But that's- How, how big is their complex? Do you know how many condos? Do you have any idea? Oh gosh, it's been so long since I sold to them. I can't tell you off the, the top of my head. And theirs is a little different than mine. Mine has four units, two upstairs, two downstairs, one of them an upstairs, downstairs, I think in, in my group. Theirs are more- You walk up a stairway, you turn left or right, and there's two upstairs, and then you go down and there's two downstairs, and then you go to the next section. So theirs are more connected long-term, longer distance. It's just fascinating to see what subdivisions are allowing what in this world now of Airbnb, VRBO. Does that create a discussion? Has it gone to the state state level or is it handled locally about- It's still handled locally here by our homeowners associations. And interestingly, so Steve's that I'm going to put on the market, someone looked at it who's a realtor in his subdivision, and we're talking 104 townhomes. In that subdivision, you have to live in your house for a full year before you can consider renting it. And then it has to be a long-term rental, six months to a year. So no short-term, and you have to own or occupy it first year, which means no flippers can come in there and buy it. So so no discussion from an owner's right standpoint or that hasn't been challenged yet that you're aware of? Nope. Nope. And we talked about, before we got into this, about yep. your unit and the company who's helping you manage and market yep. told you what about your reservations, even though you can take short term? Yes. Yes. I only wanted to do a month. I didn't want to mess with it more often. Well, now I'm paying somebody else to mess with it. Somebody else to clean it, do the dishes, tell me if I need light bulbs, all those things. They actually moved a new couch in and got rid of the old couch the other day. So stuff that I would have to pay somebody or get people to do anyway. Evolve is a company I use and Evolve works with Airbnb and VRBO and like six or seven locations. And as we were getting to summer, which is our slow time, right? That's when our snowbirds are gone back home. They're not coming here for a month at a time. They told me that I should take it and, and accept people for two days. And I said, well, what about one day? And they were like, no, 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 no. One day are people who just have parties and leave. So what did you tell me about? So those are like the house party that we talked about, that there were some kids rented for a night, put together a house party, 250 plus into the house. The police were called. They damaged and destroyed thousands of dollars on the property itself and the neighbors and those kind of things. Wow. It Is that just, in San Antonio, Eric? Was that in your area? You know, I it's been a while since the story was out. It just really s- stuck with me because of my work in the historic districts and the yeah. fact that this is where people want to go stay for an Airbnb because instead of being on the river in some very stereotypical hotel that everybody does a carbon copy of. It's like, well, this is going to be the Holiday Inn Express. This is the whatever. It gives it that unique character. It gives it the size. It gives it... Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not drawing a blank on good good phrases. Well, Uh, sometimes sometimes just those old homes have front porches, you know, and things like that, that when you think of... Right. And you can walk out the door and you can walk down the street and you can see all of the old houses and people are walking their dogs and will chat with you and things like that. But the residents who live there don't want a bunch of transients who are yeah. coming in for a week. Yeah. They want neighbors because they feel like ultimately the value of the entire neighborhood is impacted by the number of short term rentals. Mm-hmm. So it's becoming more and more of a discussion within the city. It's actually reached its way up to the state. Does Arizona have a political action committee, the Arizona Realtors? Of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so ours is TREPAC, Texas Real Estate Political Action Committee. They're the ones who go up. We descend on the state capitol mm-hmm. every time there's a legislative session. We meet with all of our local reps. There are opening sessions, and it's real estate day up at the capitol. But all of those things, by the time the legislative session is done in Texas, 
we're going to end up with probably two to 3,000 changes to real estate law in some very, very small, minute way because of a new law that was passed. And that all rolls through. And a lot of owner rights are a big part of that discussion. So my unit is in a place where 70% are rentals, 70%. Part of the reason I bought it is because it's a logistically located close to Sabino Canyon of hikers and Canyon Ranch with muy expensive, (laughs) you know, visitors and stuff. So I'm grateful for that because like even in my own subdivision, I would need to go back to the HOA because I don't know here what I could do. So let's just say I go live in France for a couple months like I want to do. Could I rent my place out? I don't know. It, it's never been a question of, for me before. But as the years go by and I want to be gone longer and longer, there's a piece of me that thinks, one, it's be nice to have the income. And two, is it safer and better to have somebody in your house while you're gone? So somebody be in your house, then your house empty. Yep. Yep. Checking the mail, making sure that the refrigerator doesn't break. You know, stuff. Yeah. Because even if you don't expect to get mail, Right. There's all of that stuff that we still get. We used to refer to it more as junk mail, but there's still advertising flyers. There's the occasional catalog or magazine or something you have an affiliation with that comes in. Do your property managers in your area, because of these snowbirds, Mm -hmm. do they pick up business during the summer that they manage? Do any of the property managers there switch over from full-time management to short-term Not very often. Usually they're pretty drilled down in their specifics. We'll be switching over now. July 1st will be the time frame for university people. So university people come in, don't know where they want to live. They might get into the vacant rental, but they're going to sign at least a year lease while they figure out, you know, where they're going to go. And as you and I have talked about before, and as an ex-military, you know, the military moves you when they want to move you. I don't care what t- what month it is, what time of year it is, whether you own, whether you rent. <laughs> you right. Know? Orders are orders and you're going to go. That piece. So, and we have that migration going on right now. Do you? It, yeah. It, we have people who are getting their orders in PCS and they're starting to make those decisions on, okay, time to pack up, time to move. I know I've had conversations in the past. Someone who thinks they want to retire to San Antonio, so they bought a house knowing they have one more PCS, and yeah. who who can handle their rental for the next two years, three years before they come back. Right, right. And those discussions that happen. Your sister needs to be a little ADD here just for a moment. Move your head so people can see what's behind you. Victor's group is what Eric goes by. Eric, your lion looks like Mufasa to me. And I was not a fan of Mufasa in The Lion King. I, I think... I'm like, I keep looking at this lion behind you and I'm a little bit Well, actually, it's when you look at a lot of lions and the Uh characters of them, Disney did a good job of capturing... What lions look like? What I mean, there's only so many faces that a lion has (laughs) between Scar and Mufasa. You could have eyelashes or, you know. (laughs) I could. I could. (laughs) But this is my non-real estate real estate logo. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Because how many real estate logos are house rooftops? Yeah, I don't have And it's like, not going to do it. I'm a a cat person. I've liked cats for a long time. So one other thing, I I don't know whether that I, if we have time, I'd like to touch on is related to what I've learned about the sale of Steve's house being power of attorney and executive. All right. Final thoughts and then closes. Okay. Okay. I'm in the process, you guys. I had a listing that was going to go live today. As part of the will, the will was set up so that I was going to be the listing agent on it. And simultaneously, I'm the power of attorney. Well, my friend died yesterday. Now, there's no such thing as a power of attorney when somebody has passed away. So now I will be executor. But that won't happen until I get death certificates, which could take a week, 10 days or whatever. And the house was supposed to go live today. So I already had a sign in the yard. And we can get in trouble for having signs in the yard when the houses aren't on the market because it's like free advertising or something. So 18 years in the business, you and I have talked, you know, like time goes by and you always learn something. And what I learned today is the best laid plans still could change. The house can't go on the market because we can't get an offer because we can't legally accept an offer. Because you can't do anything with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every time I think I know, I, I guess I don't ever think I know everything because clearly I don't, you know. I every don't. transaction is different. Yes. And every. 
set of buyers and sellers and everybody involved. It's always dynamic, no matter how right. much a neighborhood is the same, no matter how close it is, no matter, I mean, cause you guys, that, that house, Steve's house you said is near where you're at and you're Definitely both townhome like, communities. So there's a lot of similarities yet very, very distinctly different. Yep. Different within the, yep, yep. And before I forget, we talked about me and the referral, but go back to your referral that you got years ago. Cause this morning we were talking about the kids you hung out with. You were talking about Steve Zebold, Kurt Schwarzenegger, and, 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 and drinking and, cheap Greek, dr Greek wine. From all Kurt. right. And, and, and with cheap Greek wine, I have to call out Denise Rogers too, because ah. she worked up there the, the second year and she worked up at Dino's with me. So ah. she that probably had a bottle of the Retsina as well so i couldn't believe you guessed that wine that was awesome yeah well when you said it was his greek buddies it's like it's got to be retzina <laughs> awesome yeah. it's very fruity very sweet not quite a uh muscatel or something along those lines but a lot of the greek wines are super sweet but when you mentioned steve zebold then i thought about dan zebold who who was a client of mine because of facebook and being connected on Facebook. And when he moved from Katy, Texas, outside of Houston, six years ago, he's like, hey, are you still doing real estate? Can you help us out? So three transactions later, the last one moving him back up to Ohio. They went back to uh, Ohio. Because of family circumstances. But yeah, that's the, um, the world goes round. People yeah. move, migrate, and that's what we're here for. And that's what we're here for. Whether, whether we're birds with two legs or four legs. Or four legs. Those four-legged birds. <laughs> Clearly, I had like cats in my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we want to thank you all for listening and for joining us as we reflect and recall our life in Lindsay, Ohio, and some of the relationships that we developed in Lindsay, right? And how it's affected our careers in real estate. Clearly, lifestyle matters to us and the homes we lived in. And this is, we hope, a perfect blend of the two. As we wrap this up, please keep in mind that our goal is to communicate, educate, entertain, and connect with you. And we hope that we've done some of that anyway. <laughs> now, if you're in Arizona, and specifically I'm in the Tucson area, and I'm available to help you while Eric is in South Central Texas in the San Antonio area. And by the way, the Hill Country, if you don't know what that is, you should look that up. We are both realtors with Keller Williams, and we're here to help you find the perfect property for you to call home and create your own memories like we have, clearly lots of them. If you're across the United States, around the world, we're both part of an extensive network, again, which we've talked to you a little bit about today. And we are professional real estate advisors, and we'd be happy to connect you with a realtor in an area where you need a realtor. Until next time, remember, it may be simple, but it ain't always easy. And I'm Donna. And I'm Eric. Is, and we are Real, real Siblings. siblings. Thanks, y'all. I don't think we're ever going to get that exactly right. <laughs> Every time I think about the places I have known, I realize that times have changed. So I'll do what I can to make this house into a home. I'm Annabelle, and I want to thank you for investing your valuable time in listening to Real Sibling. It ain't easy. I hope you found this episode informative and enjoyable. There are several ways you can support this podcast with my Grandpa Eric and Aunt Grandma. Please take the time to like, follow, and subscribe. Additionally, leave them a five-star rating along with a review on your preferred podcast platform. The final thing I would ask is that you recommend this podcast to a friend, a family member, or an associate. Your engagement is critical to their ongoing success, and they look forward to connecting. Check out the show notes Grandpa put together with their contact information, including emails, phone numbers, and websites. And remember, the real siblings look forward to hearing from you.